with the permissions of um, the organizers, uh, uh, we begin the third day. So, on behalf of the entire team of I Can Care, IHBS, and Gujarat University, I welcome each and every one of you to the third day of the International E Conclave on Tobacco Cessation. Welcome our Chief Patron, uh, Rotarian Kalyan Banerjee, our Patron, Professor MC Mishra, Chairperson, Professor Dr. Nimesh Desai, and a co chairperson, Dr. Rakesh Rawal from Gujarat University. I also like to welcome our, the entire organizing committee who have made this particular event, uh, which a month long event, in, uh, divided into four, uh, four sessions to be a fruitful event where, for tobacco, effective implementation of tobacco cessation. I would also like to thank our supporters with, uh, with, with whose help we could. Uh, uh, materialize this and uh, and uh, make it a reality, make this event a reality. I would like to thank ISO, FHNO, Indian Chess Society, Delhi Psychiatry Society, CMHARTS, RAGAP, RSD Hospital, and IDS and Santosh University. I would also extend my gratitude to the pharma partners. I We move ahead with the scientific session, so I hand over the dais to our uh, Master of Ceremony, Dr. Nandita Divekar. Dr. Nandita Divekar is a consultant in anesthesia and critical care at uh, Medway NHS Trust in UK. And she is the leader there for smoking cessation in her hospital. And uh, she is very passionate about uh, tobacco cessation, mostly smoking cessation, and has been pivotal in starting the stop before the, uh, before the OP clinics. And uh, she has also been awarded for the CO, uh, CO award for the brilliance uh, to study the Ottawa model. So I welcome uh, Dr. Nandita Divekar to take the scientific session forward. Namaste and thank you very much. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good, it's good morning. It's a very beautiful morning here in the UK. Uh, and thank you very much, Dr. Pavan Gupta, Dr. Reena, and Dr. Nimesh, uh, sir, for allowing me to moderate this session. Um, our next chairperson is Dr. Shruti Srivastava. It gives me great pleasure to introduce her. She is working as a professor. Uh, of Psychiatry in the Department of Psychiatry, University College of Medical Sciences, affiliated with the University of Delhi and Guru Tegh Bahadur Hospital. She has over 80 publications in national and international journals, and she's a reviewer for peer-reviewed journals, and she's associate editor uh, for Psychiatric Journal, and the list goes on and on. Uh, she has been working on the proposed amendments of Mental Health Care Act 2017 since two years, um, and she's a convener of women's mental health, uh, IPS. She has co-authored IPS position statement on violence against women. And she is a recipient of the national and international awards and fellowships as well. Oh, welcome, Dr. Shruti. And she's going to um, chair. Yeah. And she's going to chair the biopsychosocial uh, aspect to tobacco cessation. Welcome. A very good afternoon. It has been a very interesting and indeed uh, something unique uh, which Dr. Pavan shared. We, we were not aware of uh, your uh, unique inventions. Otherwise, you know, sir, we would have definitely been used in our clinical practice. And uh, Dr. Patel, I, I want to uh, tell you that we are already sharing your view on uh, a, a computer assisted. We have developed a computer assisted de-addiction uh, counseling session for especially for nicotine dependence and we are training all our undergraduates last several years they come to us they get posted and uh, we are doing it in undergraduate posting as well as for the interns and for the resident doctors so the, the, that is uh, and uh, been, we've been seeing patients and uh, every day but uh, the whole thing is that uh, as uh, Dr. Pavan has been highlighting we need to have ambassadors and I, I really appreciate his point of uh, the ambassadors at the grassroots level because that is where I think we are not able to still get that uh, networking which uh, he has shared. So uh, coming over to Dr. Vishal Chabra, he has over 20 years of experience as in clinical practice and he has worked in our institution as a senior resident and worked in Ibhas, Ribhans, and Metro Group of Hospitals. He is a Life Fellow of Indian Psychiatric Society, Indian Association of Biological Psychiatry, Indian Association of Social Psychiatry, and Indian Association of Private Psychiatry. And he is currently the co-chairman of the Indian Psychiatric uh, Society uh, Task Force. Uh, 
can you just move on the slide okay so uh, he is a senior consultant and uh, he has his own uh, clinic as well as he is attached to uh, several leading hospitals and has a very uh, enriched experience so we would like uh, to hear uh, our speaker dr vishal chhatra thank you dr shruti uh, good evening everyone I'd like to thank ikin care and ibhas for organizing this amazing uh, e conclave spread over whole month uh, taking up sundays evening very nice i already actually did a program uh, with dr pavan and his team in december there was this course they were doing so i i tried and uh, i worked in that i think it's very interesting the way they have taken tobacco to a different level tobacco association because if you look at the rehab centers rehab centers uh, you know they dole out cigarettes to the de addicts as uh, as part of the token economy so if you have good behavior you get a cigarette <laughs> you know that was the that's the way the things have been going on you know so nobody nobody looks at tobacco as a serious uh, life threatening uh, problem so anyways so i'm very happy with what i can get is doing uh, so let's come to my topic because we have very short time i wanted to talk about the biopsychosocial aspect of tobacco session can you see my slide yes yes dr vishal we can see thank you you yeah. i'm loading it here okay so i'm going to talk about the biopsychosocial aspect of tobacco session so there are different models of addiction to sabse pehla model tha that was the moral model moral model put the blame on the patient for getting addicted and it is their responsibility to get de addicted so unki responsibility so if somebody was getting addicted it is their moral falling down you know so and they have to lift up there was the earliest models of addiction then that came the enlightenment model then enlightenment model is the one which is uh, you know used by alcoholics anonymous and other groups like narcotics anonymous and other similar groups they talk about uh, that okay you got addicted that is your i mean i mean that is your fault you got addicted but coming out is not your problem we going to help you come out and so you accept that alcohol you know you cannot control it and you give it to supreme power and that will help you so that is the enlightenment model i'm talking very briefly uh, so if i'm missing some details please don't mind because the time is short then came the medical or disease model or bio biomedical model which talked about there is a causation and there is effect which again talked about you know how how genes are involved how biological rhythms are involved how chemicals are involved and that was causing the disease and the focus was on pharmacotherapy and treatments uh, more biologically oriented then came a compensatory model because there was always a the reason these models have been evolving because of our model model was putting a lot of pressure on the patient making the person feel guilty the second one was not working out that much so medical model came in but medical model its own liking because you know there are patients who get better without treatment and there are patients who don't get better despite all the treatment you know so that's why this models are getting involved so there came a compensatory model now this compensatory model looked at various factors which may be causing uh, any kind of addiction so so not exactly biopsycho but it is kind of precursor to biopsychosocial so they looked at various factors which could be leading to it then came uh, this famous uh, psychiatrist who came up with the biopsychosocial model for mental health problems mental diseases and and an addiction also took uh, note of it and so there was a biopsychosocial model of addiction so what is it so this model talks about addiction is a complex disorder where is the interplay of host of factors not just biological factors but also psychological factors and sociological factors so yes somebody may be genetically prone to get addicted <clears throat> but also depends on the person's personality traits also depends on the person's upbringing also depends on the where person is living the environment around the social norms the customs there the peer group you know uh, the availability of the substance and multiple factors are involved the family the modeling of the parents all those other factors are also take a role from before somebody becomes an addict 
so if you look at biological you know addictions happens as a physical addiction so we know it's biologically oriented that's why you having withdrawal symptoms and that's why you get a relief when you use the substance you have stress you use the substance immediately you get a relief so there's a chemical thing going on in the brain you also know there are reward mechanisms in the brain which have been dealt before in the previous uh, sessions i will not get into detail similarly psychologically paired activities so a lot of times Uh, people they get up in the morning and they smoke. They say, "Unless I smoke, I can't poo." So you know, the, before you they, they go to the toilet, they have to smoke. They have to smoke after you know having a dinner or having a meal. So those kind of paired activities, which also becomes part of routine habits, they are triggers. Uh, there's a there's a lunch break or there's a coffee break in the office, or you're feeling too stress, then that triggers a nicotine. Break. They call nicotine break or tobacco. Uh, you know, lighting up a cigarette or uh, chewing tobacco. Again, meeting in a social gathering leads to that. Coping with emotions. Lot of addicts. They don't know how to cope with, you know, stress except taking the help of the crutch of addiction, whether it's alcohol, tobacco, or any other substance. When they are stressed, they'll take it. When they are free, nothing to do, they take it. When they are happy, they take it. When they have too much to do, they take it. when they can't sleep it they take it when they slept too much they take it so when there's a festival they take it when there's a death they take it so they just don't know when to stop every time any emotion any stress any trigger they rush to the substance and that becomes a big problem which needs to be untangled also there are social issues connections the peer pressures we have fitting into that population uh, i remember talking to dr pawan we both talked about when we both in college we had so much difficulty because our friends will force us are tu to cigarette nahi peeta tu to daru nahi peeta tu to kisi kaam ka nahi hai useless hai <laughs> and that kind of ridicule you you suffer in so you do it to fit in and so fitting in causes a lot of times pressure to people to do the uh, and once you start doing it so after some time it becomes a pattern and then you get stuck in it again the family's behavior towards substances and the partner's behavior towards substances that also affects <clears throat> now the biopsychosocial model of substance abuse treatment it talks because again i'm just repeating for everybody to understand that there's so many uh, you know different physical health is there there is exposure to the substance if you look at these cross sections you know the drug effects which can affect both the social and the biological the temperament which can which can come both from biology and from psychological issues so The, all these together uh, causes addiction, and that's why we need to address each and everything. So we need to take care when somebody is coming for treatment to look at their physical health, try and help it. Any disability caused by substance abuse, we need to work on it. We need to look at any genetic vulnerability, how much exposure to substance they had, what a kind of temperament they have, what belief systems they have, what attitudes they have towards drug addiction, what kind of self-esteem they have. what coping skills they have developed or they have most of them lack social coping same they lack social skills they don't know how to mix with people how to go to a party without doing the substance and what kind of family relationships there what traumas because of fam substance abuse there's a lot of trauma in their family the fights there is issues there are stealing and then there what kind of peer group they are we need to help them change their peer group what circumstances are which are leading to substance abuse and the work they are in so chances of success in uh, drug abuse treatment can be increased by looking at the combination of biological psychological and social factors which leads to substance abuse so let's look at the principles of a uh, biopsychosocial model it's important to remember that uh in this model unlike the bio biomedical model where we talk with doctor takes all the command or a moral model or any other here patient is openly talking with the physician or the treating team so physician is more open doesn't blame the patient for the disease they understand that there is a genetic vulnerability which has led to patient doing the substance it's important we need to create trust among all the stakeholders as a patient the family members of the patient or the treating team we need to encourage curiosity if patient has any queries कि मेरे को नशा क्यों होता है डॉक्टर साहब डॉक्टर साहब मैंने छः महीने पहले क्विट कर दिया था मैंने फिर स्टार्ट कर दिया डॉक्टर साहब मैं क्या करूं गिल्ट हो जाता है पेशेंट को एंगर हो जाता है 
आई एम डूइंग इट फॉर माई फैमिली वो तो मेरे को अभी भी ताने मारते हैं सो आई री स्टार्ट इट सो अंडरस्टैंडिंग इमोशनल रिएक्शन ऑफ दोज पेशेंट्स एक्नोलेजिंग सेल्फ बायस दैट एज डॉक्टर्स वी समटाइम्स अब मो बायस वी से ये तो एडिक्ट है ये तो वैसे ही यू नो वी लुक डाउन अपॉन दैन दैट वी शुड नॉट डू इट एनी टाइम एनी सेल्फ बायस इज कमिंग वी नी शुड बी केयरफुल अबाउट इट वी नीड टू एन ओपन कॉम्युनिकेशन एंड दिस इज वन ट्रीटमेंट विच इज एविडेंस बेस्ड there are much more therapy papers which are more more papers are done on cbt for de addiction medications for de addiction uh, social interventions for de addictions preventive medicines for de so all of them if you look at the maximum research is done in this area on biopsychosocial models so that's why it is a most of a evidence based treatment now let's look at few merits and demerits of the biopsychosocial model of addiction the merits are we do not blame the patient so we don't assign blame it's more holistic we not just saying okay tumhe hum dawai de denge tum dawai khao ghar jao and that will take care of everything no we are saying okay we'll give you medicines to help you we'll also take care of physical health we'll take care of mental health we'll do therapies to help you strengthen your ego systems your ego strengths your coping mechanisms how to deal with peers how to say no to peers who who offer you uh, substances you know it's ever evolving because you know the models we learn the th- the therapies we know the evidence we have it keeps getting better and better and so it's ever evolving the way we going to do like i can care is a good example it is based on biopsychosocial model their map and it is evolving you know as we get more experience we evolve more it's patient friendly which is very very important we not blocking up patients we not looking down upon patients we look treating them as humans who are ill and we need to help them and it is also inside oriented with biopsychosocial model uh because we talking to the patient we helping the family members understand the nuances of addiction it's inside oriented so patient starts getting idea ah oh, acha i got upset that the other day that's why it smoke oh because my friends pressurized me that's why i smoke so those kind of things but there are demerits because there are demerits to everything in life one we are giving too much information to the client so sometimes when client is in a hurry ye doctor saab bas mujhe dawai de do main theek ho jaunga bas mujhe ab dawai de do i want to quit then this model doesn't work because they don't understand if you try to give too much information and not all clients like information it can create tension between patient and the doctor because you know uh, sometimes they can any doctor aap maine to ye padha tha ye this should be the treatment or why are you doing this or why are you doing that so because we are allowing open communication so that could be one issue and because we doing we we dealing with family we doing a lot of therapies it is time consuming so it is not suited for short term care it is more suited for medium to long term care so some points to remember when you doing addiction especially for uh, nicotine average quit attempts before complete recovery for nicotine is 8 so kam se kam 8 bar patient cigarette chhodta hai aur uh, chhodna padega you know this it takes so many attempts before the patient is totally out of it so don't get frustrated if if despite the best of your treatment patient started again started again and again and again and again and again you know eight times is a big number remember that success increases when there is a plan we should ideally address all three areas of addiction factors you know all three so we we need to have plan which looks at biological factors we need to have plan which looks at psychological factors and we need to have plan which addresses the sociological factors and you know we have been talking about it in the past uh, sessions biological we have nrts we have anti craving drugs and other methods psychologically we have we need to have cbt to take care of triggers targeting thoughts and behavior around smoking and stress management and social we need to develop coping to manage social triggers social support for non smoking lifestyle change the change the immediate and intermediate environment of the patient because we can't change the whole society but help the patient and the family members come together like you know if a fam- other family member is smoking cigarette patient poor patient is sitting at home seeing the other person smoking that's not going to help you know that will be little tough so it's important to engage the family members so with all these uh information i just wanted to say thank you to all of you for listening thank you indeed a very li- enlightening talk dr vishal so uh, we will be taking questions right now or 
or you can watch huh? in or, the end in the end later in the end okay so dr vishal has, uh, has very uh, has highlighted all the things which we need to encompass when we are uh, doing on pharmacological interventions uh, right because in the patient that is bad going to this is carcinoma this is carcinogenic or this is going to spoil your health or this is injurious to health is not what the public is expecting and that simply doesn't modify let make them modify their behavior uh, other important point that we have noticed in clinical practice is that pharmacotherapy alone doesn't work so if uh, whatever is the uh, molecule that is being developed by the pharma industry we are also you know it, it saves a lot of time for a, for a, for a psychiatrist as well that if that drug alone works then nothing nothing can be a better substitute for us but unfortunately to my the best of my experience pharmacology just prescribing a drug it doesn't lead to any de addiction so always always that is a dictum and that, that is a dictum and that should be followed necessarily that all non pharmacological interventions be it alcohol be it nicotine or be it any other substance because youngsters are nowadays using a lot of cannabis different forms of cannabis is being uh, taken along with nicotine so many a times we are not getting pure forms but we are getting a form, uh, patients abusing different forms of uh, multiple drugs so uh, non pharmacological interventions along with the pharmacological interventions and a focus on relapse prevention and a necessary focus on relapse prevention after essentially detoxification that is the mainstay of the treatment and that is evidence based and uh, that is being what we see in our day to day clinical practice so since we are not taking any questions right now i think uh, the next session can start thank, thank you. you very much dr shruti thank you very much dr vishal it was a wonderful uh, enlightening talk for me especially as a critical care consultant about the multifaceted approach and the non pharmacological and pharmacological approach combined yes there have been lots of papers on it especially during the covid period when people are going we you know the reason for some of the people going back in isolation when they are they come back and say oh i was all alone and you know these multiple factors caused me to relapse that's a big issue now Uh, let's go on thank you very much and let's